In this episode of Tasmoto Tips, I'm going to show you how to configure a Tuya MCU dimmer, which brings us back to the roots of the very first video of this YouTube channel where we configured and flashed a Tuya dimmer with Tasmoto and brought dimming to Tasmoto. So let's check out this new dimmer and we'll teach you how to use the Tuya MCU module and Tasmoto on a couple other dimmers. Let's get to it. So of course we have shown several different types of dimmers before and there's different types of class of, of dimmers. There's the type that use the Tuya MCU or there's the Martin Jerry style. These are both the same dimmer we've covered in before. They just have a little different faceplate. This one has more of a decor push button with a rocker inside of it. And this just simply has three buttons for your on and off, up and down. Now, one thing we do like about this particular class is you can program each button and you can get the long press actions out of each button. So basically you get six buttons and they're very versatile in what you can do with them. Because like we've shown in other videos, we even did a video showing six down lights controlled by two dimmers. What sets these dimmers apart is all these have a secondary MCU inside them. And some things that are, are particular might be better are the dimming rates, the dimming fade speeds, etc. They're all going to be hard coded in the dimmer itself, but they may be smoother for some people. They have touch panels on the front. These particular two all have your touch panels where you can drag your finger up and down and change the dimming level. This one, which of course I've had it upside down the whole time. I can't read the up arrow right here. This one is more of a rocker style and it has a segmented display in it so you can actually see the dimming level with a you know, one through nine, I believe, on this one. They all work with Tasmoda. With the Martin Jerry ones, as of the recording of this video, I still am using my little fork of this version for Tasmoto due to it makes the dimming rate work better and the LEDs than doing them with rules. But possibly we are looking at moving that away from that fork and get it folded in using some rules so we can get it working fast enough. So let's go ahead and look at the Tuya MCU on Tasmoto and how do we set up these different dimmers. So you plan on making your own PCB, right? Well, of course you're gonna use PCB Way, but be sure and check out their contest that's running right now. It's the third PCB design contest. Be sure and check out all the prizes. We'll leave the link down below in the description of the video. Be sure and check everything out and enter your PCB in the PCB Way contest. So of course with Tuya Convert, you're not gonna to have to do this step but, of course, with the roots of this channel, we always like to take things apart and look inside because maybe Tuya Convert may not always be around or things could be patched in the future. So let's dive inside and see what makes this thing tick. So pull the three screws out and there is a screw on this side and we're going to pull the last screw out on this side. So in the recording of this video, we are using 7.004. It does include the Tuya MCU commands, and we will be showing how to configure it with the dimmer and set the dimmer range, etc., which will apply to several different dimmers, but we're going to show you a couple different ones just to show you the little minor differences that you may run into. The dimmer here is the Mohs Treat Life one, and of course we will leave all the links down to the dimmers in the description of the video. So first you may be wondering, hey, let me go run over and grab a template so I can get this dimmer working. Well, really with the Tuya MCU, you really don't need a template. So what you do is just go ahead and go to configuration and go to configure module. For module type, go ahead and select the Tuya MCU and hit save. 
once it reboots go ahead and go into the console and type in web log space 4 and hit enter because what we're looking for are the serial commands coming back from that secondary MCU we saw on that PCB board in the dimmer. Now you'll see various commands. You'll see it saying send that 55AA000FF. Now some of the veterans have been around the channel and watched a lot of the live streams will remember we did a live stream of trying to figure out this actual dimmer on how to get rid of that red light up there that kept showing. And we found out it was the heartbeat packet it needed every 10 seconds. So what you're seeing here is about every 10 to 11 seconds, you're seeing the heartbeat packet being sent over serial pins. Now you should get a response of a okay basic handshake message from the Tuya MCU. Now in this example with this dimmer, we're not seeing that handshake at all. So if you're not getting any packets back, a really easy way it to go configure it is go and change the pins. Go to main menu and most of the dimmers that are used the MCUs, I've seen them either use the pins of TX and RX of the GPIO 1 and 3 or you configure 13 for Tuya RX and 15 for Tuya TX and make sure and set the GPIO 1 and 3 to none. You can't double configure pins. And then go ahead and hit save. And now go into the console. Now immediately you may have seen it shows an on now. Wait, where's the dimming? Well, just hold on. So now you'll notice when it sends over the heartbeat, it's actually doing a Tuya received. So great. Now we have Tasmodo talking to the Tuya MCU. Awesome stuff. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now you will notice if you look at the dimmer now in this frame above me, you'll see the red light is no longer blinking because the heartbeat packets are working. Now luckily one thing, this dimmer did skip. It automatically detected the on and off ID for the Tuya MCU. So now we need to reference the Tuya MCU wiki on Tasmodo. And yes, we will leave this link straight to the wiki page and you can walk straight through it with your dimmers. Now the Tuya MCU supports a ton of additional features, not only just for dimming. There's power monitoring, there's all kind of other different sensors, and it's definitely to the thanks of Shantour and his work, and definitely we'll always still call him the Tuya MCU Whisperer. We all appreciate his work. He's done an amazing job of being able to integrate Tuya MCU type processors and devices into Tasmoda with ease for everyone. So typically, you'll see the we need to set the dimmer function ID. And they state the dimmer DPID is generally two or three. Well, let's go back to the console and take your finger on the faceplate and touch the dimmer to change the dimming level of the switch. Now before the packets scroll away for the heartbeat packets that are keep continuing every 10 seconds, if you look quickly on the console, you'll see we have a DPID of three. Well, that's a real giveaway. We see the one, we see the three. Let's go ahead and try the three and we'll assign that for the dimming of the Tuya module. So how we do that, if you simply copy this command straight from the wiki and we'll paste it in the console. But remember, ours is gonna be three not two. Now once you enter it in, you should get the response back and give it a second because the actual Tasmoda switch is going to reboot. Now you'll notice on the main menu in the GUI, you do get a dimmer slider. Well, go ahead and let's try to set the dimming on the GUI itself. It should match on the faceplate somewhat. And now you'll notice immediately it went to just one LED. So now we had the dimmer working somewhat. Put it all the way to dark and then we put it all the way to bright. We're only getting three LEDs. It's only going to give us like half brightness. Well, we need to set the range and every dimmer is going to be different pretty much. So this can't be hard coded. So every dimmer needs to be set and you need to figure out what's the low and the high. It's really simple. So take your finger and go all the way up and make sure you're putting it on full brightness. So you should see 
this RX dim state. Now try to get the highest number you can. And so that's going to be your max is 234. And a lot of dimmers I did find will use 255. So maybe if you do want to set it to 255, if instead of 234, your mileage may vary, you can try both for the max. So now we need to find the min. Make a note of your max. Now slide your finger all the way and put it to the lowest level on the face plate. And make sure you got it all the way down. So our low level, if you look, RX dim state is 48. So simply type in dimmer range with no space. We'll do 48 comma 234 and hit enter. You should see it get the response back that it took the command. Now give it a second, it's gonna reboot. Take the slider and watch the switch and you should see now the value is gonna go all the way to full brightness. Now if you notice on my switch, the top LED is still not lit. So you can manipulate the range just by going back to the console. So maybe we'll expand the range a little bit to say 35 comma 255. Now when we slide the slider on the GUI, we do get all of the LEDs present and it goes to full brightness. And that's pretty much it for set it up. And you simply go back to the console and type in weblog space two that turns off all those extra commands and debugs so you don't have to see all those packets when you're going to go look for something else in the console. Let's give it a shot on the faceplate itself and watch the log. And now you'll see it's the dimmer level of 52. And that dimmer level is from 0 to 100 on a scale. So at this point, you could follow the template we will leave in the description of the video for if you want to manually add it to Home Assistant. Or you could at this point also use the auto discovery, which is the set option 19 that we have just shown in previous videos as well. And it would bring the dimmer right into Home Assistant for you. So let's check out another dimmer and see a little difference on the Tuya MCU command. So we've connected up the Tekken dimmer. We'll go into, again, configuration, configure module, and we'll set it to the Tuya MCU and save it. So sure enough, we do get a toggle. So probably it is communicating on those pins. If we do weblog4 on the console, and let's see if we see those heartbeat packets again. So sure enough, you did see a heartbeat packet get sent off and received back. Good to go. We don't have to mess with those other GPIO pins. So now let's go and go back, and let's see if we can turn this dimmer on and off. This is where things get different. Now you'll notice we cannot turn the dimmer on and off. Nothing is happening. So if you remember, I said the Tuya MCU does a lot of different functions. So if we look in the main Tuya MCU wiki, you can see we need to map the relay and that's going to be your on and off. That's the Tuya MCU function of 11. So we need to map 11, which is our relay, to the DPID, but we need to find that DPID again. So let's bump back to the console and we will toggle the switch itself. So the switch is on. Now you'll notice it says right here, DPID equals 20. It's a dead giveaway and shows you exactly which one is which. Paste in to your MCU 11 and the ID is 20 for the on and off relay. Hit enter should see the message, takes the command, give it a second, it's gonna reboot. Now let's see on the console if we can toggle it on and off. So in the Tekken, the green LED is on when the switch is off, and it shows the one little LED of the status of what the dimming level is set at. Boom, now we turned it on, we can turn it back on, and we have the relay set, good job. Well, let's go set the dimming, it's gonna be the same exact way as we did before with the other dimmer. We'll set it full brightness, and you can already see the DPID is 22. Is Tuya MCU 21? So do Tuya MCU, and you the case does not matter. I'm just copying and pasting from the wiki. Space 21 comma 22. You should see it take the command, and now it's gonna reboot, and then we'll try out the dimming. Now we get the dimmer slider, and it appears at first it's not working. But as you can see, it is sending the dim level back and forth. 
So let's just try to set the dimmer range. So we'll set the dimmer as high as we can on the faceplate. Ah, look at that. You can see a lot different range than what we had on the previous dimmer. The RX dim state is 1000 when it's all the way at the top. So that's why we didn't see it on that scale because it defaults the scale to I think 100. So we'll lower it down all the way on the faceplate. The low value we get is 60 for the lowest value. So you guessed it, we'll do dimmer range 60 comma 1000 and hit enter. You should see the response message. It took your command. It's gonna reboot of course and we'll set it to full brightness. Boom, we got all the LEDs up. We'll set it halfway. Got about half of the LEDs, go all the way down and we get down to one LED, perfect. And we can toggle it and toggle it back on. And of course, just like before, we can use the manual template if you wanna bring it straight into Home Assistant in the configuration YAML, or of course you can use auto discovery with set option 19. So pretty cool stuff. Shantor did a great job on bringing the Tuya MCU stuff into Tasmodo and it's evolving every day. So I want to say thanks to all the Patreon subscribers. It definitely helps out with various projects and bringing things to the channel. And thanks for everyone hanging out, having fun in Discord and hanging out in all the various live streams. And if you're not already a subscriber, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you can catch the next live stream because sometimes we do giveaways and various other things and sometimes we just really just goof off. It's a lot of fun. So definitely check us out and y'all take care.